The sea, the eternal giver of life, covers four-fifths of the surface of the earth. Without it, the land upon which we live might look something like this. For the moisture of the great waters rises into the air to form masses of vapor, which we call clouds. And the moving clouds gather above mountain and valley and lowland across the earth. Cool air condenses the clouds. The heavy drops of moisture fall and there is rain. Running off the slopes of the earth, the rainfall forms little streams that grow in volume and power as they are joined by others. When the air is sufficiently cold, instead of rain, snow falls. And under the rays of the sun, the snow melts, adding its water to lake and stream. Rushing ever downward through valley and forest, the waters flow across the land. And at last, they reach the lowland areas of the earth that we call drainage basins, where the broad rivers return the waters to the sea. South America is drained by two great basins, the Amazon and the Paraguay. The melting snows of the Andes, the heavy rains of the tropical lowlands, feed a thousand streams that carry their endless flood to the Atlantic. The Amazon, greatest of all rivers, flows to the east, the Paraguay to the south. A large part of the basin of the Paraguay lies within the Brazilian state of Mato Grosso. The region in the southwest of the state is known as the Pantanal, a flat, swampy land covered with jungle and rank grasses and slashed by countless rivers that coil through the wilderness. This is the land of the rainforest. Here, for months on end, the rain falls upon the tropic earth and swollen rivers overflow. And when the sun shines upon the land once more, the Pantanal is like a calm green sea stretching away to the distant horizon. Along the banks of the Rio Paraguay, homes are abandoned to the relentless power of the river. Rivers are the oldest of man's highways and are the only roads in the Pantanal. Swift, dark streams flow out of the bush country to join the Paraguay. Waterfowl of many kinds inhabit the jungle along the shores. Some varieties feed on shellfish, which they find on sandbars in the river. The streams of the Pantanal swarm with alligators, which are known as jacare in South America. The jacare will rarely attack man. He is not a bold hunter and glides into the water at the least suspicion of danger. But the other creatures must ever be on their guard for the jacare is friend to no one. Swirling water means the piranha are running. Scourge of the rivers these deadly little fish travel in great schools and their steel jaws will devour any living thing in their path. The piranha strikes swiftly. Not even the jacare is exempt from the violent cycle of life and death in the rainforest. In quiet backwaters live these curious fellows. They are tropical seals, known in Mato Grosso 
as the Areranya. And along the banks live Capybara, said to be the world's largest rodent. Long-legged wading birds gather at open water holes to feed. The Tuyuyu builds his nest high above the jungle for safety. Colorful Tukan feeds on nuts and berries of the forest. Gayest of all jungle birds is the red macaw, which in Brazil is called the arara. Blue arara are also found here. Many varieties of monkeys scamper through the trees. And great lizards blend with the foliage overhead. Here too lives the jaguar. Ants, which live on sap, destroy countless trees in the forest. While the carrier ants pick leaves with which they furnish their homes. No one knows when the canoes of men first ventured upon the waters of the rain forest. Along the tributaries of the upper Paraguay, live primitive Indians of the Bororo tribe. The Bororos are fond of personal adornment. Their principal diet is wild pig, fish, and rice, which is pounded into flour. The forest people are excellent hunters, and their arrows rarely miss their mark. A familiar sight in the Pantanal is the caboclo in his dugout canoe. These solitary hunters, whose home is the wilderness, are not unlike the hardy frontiersmen of early times in our own land. the steamboat made permanent habitations possible along the remote rivers of the Pantanal. In the brief dry season, ox carts still make their way across open country. But today, a new sound echoes across the clearings in the rain forest. Lonely cattle ranches, called fazenda, are scattered up and down the river, and the airplane is bringing civilization a little closer to people once isolated from the world of men. The self-reliant fazenderos make many of their own implements for use in everyday life. There is no refrigeration here, and meat is preserved by drying it under the hot sun. When thus cured, it will keep indefinitely. The cowboys of the Pantanal are known as vaqueros. The cattle are a hardy breed, crossed between a local variety and the Cebu of the East Indies, for the cattle we know in more temperate lands do not thrive in the hot climate of Mato Grosso. The vaquero's horse spends much of his time in the water. Finding stray cattle in the Pantanal is no easy task, for the steers love to graze among the lush grasses that fringe the rivers. At roundup time, the herds are driven to the railhead at the little town of Corumba, on their way to the market in far off São Paulo. This is a long journey across marshland and river, and the vaqueros spend almost as much time in their canoes as they do on horseback. Along with the sound of the airplane, the bulldozer is also being heard in the Pantanal today, modern tools for the conquest of the wilderness. Through man's persistence and ingenuity, the Pantanal may one day become a rich and productive land for the eternal cycle of the waters 
that created the rainforest and its rivers makes possible the boundless fertility of the earth upon which we live.